Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's really good to see you all this morning. Thank you for coming along for our time of gathered worship this morning as we come to worship the Lord, the one who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My name is Mark Johnson. I'm part of the worshiping community here in St. Andrews, and it's our constant prayer that as we meet together, as we still our hearts and focus on the Lord, as we sing and pray and, and read his word together, that we'll hear from him that we'll trust him in the midst of all that life uh, can throw at us, and that in doing so, we'll experience his love and his peace and his guiding hand one step at a time. If you're visiting with us this morning, we're so glad that you're here, and we'd encourage you with everybody else to stick around afterwards for tea and coffee that will be served at the back, and there's some juice for the young folks as well. And no matter who you are, whether you're new or whether you've been coming for quite some time or a well-established member of the church, if you need any form of help and support, and let's face it, there's times in our lives week by week where we do need help and support, uh, please fill in one of the contact forms that are on the table at the back just below the cross there and either give them to one of the elders or to myself or to pop it into the green uh, bottle that's on the table and we will seek to get alongside you very quickly. But before we do anything this morning, let's pause as we normally do and let's focus on the Lord as we pray to him together and as we ask for his help in our worship time today. Let's pray together. And as we allow our hearts and our minds to settle, hear these words of the psalmist David from Psalm 62, written at a time of great challenge and adversity in his life. David writes, I wait quietly before God, for my victory comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will never be shaken. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in him. Lord, we still our hearts this morning and we focus them on you. Help us again today, Lord, to know that you are God and that you are here with us as we gather to worship you. Lord, thank you for leading and guiding us through this past week filled with joy and sadness, good news and difficult news for many. So much, Lord, can happen from one Sunday to the next, and we are constantly being taught to number our days, and in so doing, gaining hearts of wisdom, hearts that seek to put you first above all else. Thank you that you're here with us by your Spirit. You alone are our rock and salvation, our fortress where in the midst of daily struggles or storms, we will never be shaken. You are the cornerstone of our lives, Lord. So by your spirit today, will you minister to each one of us, open our eyes, our ears, our minds, our hearts again to the wonder of your great love for each of us and help us to respond to you, Lord, today with our worship as we lift our gaze towards you. Lord, come and pour out your spirit amongst us, we pray, for it's in Jesus' name that we ask. Amen. Let's stand together and praise the Lord as we sing Christ Alone, Cornerstone, and all the words will be on the screen.
Well, let's continue to worship the Lord this morning as we pray to him together. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we bow before you this morning in prayer, acknowledging that nothing compares with the peace that we have, born from the certainty of your love for each one of us. Because of Jesus, your Son, and all he's done for us on the cross and rising from the dead, those of us who are your children, who love and follow Jesus, now live in your permanent favor and unwavering delight. You are our mighty rock and loving refuge. Our hope is built on nothing more and nothing less and nothing other than Jesus' blood poured out for us on the cross and his righteousness, his right standing with you. Lord, our hope depends on you, not on what people think or say about us. Our honor and hope is not based on our productivity or usefulness. Our hope is not based on how much we are like Jesus but on how much we are in Jesus. For nothing compares, Lord, with being certain of your love, to know for certain that we are fully and eternally your beloved children because of all that Jesus has done in his death and resurrection for us. Lord, thank you today for the freedom that we have to pour out our hearts to you, to come boldly to the throne of your grace because we still need your grace to cry for mercy because we need your mercy, to seek your forgiveness because we're so aware of our many sins and mistakes, our wrongdoings in thought and word and deed. Lord, we're thankful that because of the gospel, we don't have to rehearse what we're going to say to you before we say it, for you already know everything that's in our hearts. And so bearing this in mind, Lord, help us to confess now our sins to you this morning in the stillness of this moment. Lord, as we allow our masks to drop, we acknowledge that we feel weary and heartbroken this morning because of our sin. Some of us are perhaps restless and questioning, soul-searching even. Lord, we long, as King David did when writing Psalm 62, for rest for our weary souls. So help us, Lord, to look to you, the one who says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Help us to trust in you alone as our cornerstone for our lives. And by your spirit, Lord, will you bring your centering presence, your stabilizing mercy, your calming peace to each one of our souls today. Lord, continue to minister to us, we pray. And we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. This is an opportunity now for us to uh, celebrate with those who are uh, having a birthday today or who have celebrated a birthday in the past week. So anybody's birthday today or in the past week that you'd like to come up? <laughs> yes, Robert, come on up. Anybody else this past week or even today? Oh, Graham, come on up. Anybody else? Big round of applause for Robert and Graham here. Here we go. <laughs> So not everybody may know you folks in the church family here, um, and so 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 and so we wanted, but many of us do, and so we wanted just you, if you could introduce yourselves and uh, when your when your birthday was and what it was like. My name is Robert. My birthday was today. Today, happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> More. Yes, and I was uh, two years older than I was the first time I stood here. I am Graham. My birthday was, was it Sunday? Last time? Last Sunday? I think it was last Sunday, but I wasn't here last Sunday, so I'll, I'll take it now. Um, and I am 27, so I've had a rough life. Um, yeah. And you have a wedding coming up, Graham? Yes, I'm getting married um, 4th of April, so not too long now. 
Um, I did have to think about it, yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, here, happy birthday, to you both. It's great to see you. And uh, we're going to sing happy birthday, the tune of happy birthday, but Jesus bless you, dear Robert and Graham. Jesus bless you always. And then I'll pour you both a nice song. Let's pray for you both. Father, it's great to see Robert and Graham here this morning. We thank you for both of them. Thank you for the birthdays that they're celebrating today or last Sunday and for the opportunity to gather with family and friends. Father, we love them so very much. You love them even more. And we pray, Father, that as a, the year unfolds with Robert as a, a husband and a father and now a grandfather, with Graham uh, soon to be married to Claire in a couple of months' time, we pray that you will lead and guide each of them and their families and that they will continue to trust and follow you above all else. Father, help them to keep you at the center of their lives and help us as your church here to do all that we can to love and care for them and their families. We thank you for them both and we entrust them into your care, not just for today, but for the year that will unfold. Amen. And here we have the birthday bucket. Now, sadly, there's no fluffy pens, but you can take a, a wee wander here and see. Have a ruler. Have a ruler. There we go. You take a bracelet. Okay. Happy birthday, folks. Big round of applause for Graham and for Robert. And this week has been a, a, a bit of a roller coaster week, and so I'm really thankful to our brother Ian this morning, who is going to be sharing now with the young folks and later on from God's Word. So uh, I'm going to invite Ian to come up and to speak to the young folks. Girls and boys, would you like to come up and, uh, and meet with me? All right. When I say good morning, you say good morning back, and that makes me feel good, okay? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much indeed. If your nose was running, and I had a handkerchief, would you rather borrow this one or this one? Which one? Why? Uh, but, 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 but why? I know it's easier, but why? What's wrong with this one? I've already used it, so in comparison with this one, this one is dirty. Yeah, that's, that's about it, really. No, no, honestly, you're very hard. Would you prefer these Percy pigs or these Percy pigs? Why? It's full and this one's empty. And if I really liked you, I'd give you them, but I like my Percy pigs much, much better, so... That's one of a pair. What are those? Slippers. Okay. Which pair would you prefer? These ones? Or these ones? These ones, why? Why would you like those better than those, do you think? What's special about them? Do you like the red noses on the toes? Yes, I think I like the red noses on the toes. Are we, are we all agreed? Yes? 
They are indeed. They are brand new. They are brand new. And those are old and worn. They're not dirty like my hanky, but they're not clean either. So, so we're agreed. We like these ones. Yes, okay. Because they're brand new. Okay, what else have we got here? Would you like this one? Or this one? This one, why? Because that one's brand new as well. This one's been around a wee while, that's right. Let us see. Would you like a top that has got a great big black stain? Or one like this? <laughs> You'd like the muddy one. There's always one. Yes, okay. I was rather thinking we might go for the brand new one that was clean. Though we can always have that one put in the washing machine and maybe the black stain would come off. But those are some things that give us a choice between what is sort of dirty and what is clean, what is old and what is new, what has been used and what is brand new. And I want to talk to you just for a few minutes about something that the Bible says. If Mark could put the wee uh, memory verse up. And it's just a funny wee picture of, I think that's a cow, is it? On the right-hand side, I think that's a halo on top of the cow. Now, I don't think that cows can actually be Christians, and I don't think that cows have halos, or, and certainly I don't either, but I thought it was a funny wee picture. And this is something from the New Testament, and it's from the Living Bible. So if, if mums and dads and grannies and grandas and aunts and uncles have other translations, it'll not come across just like this, but I like this one particularly. When someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a, what, what's that next phrase? A brand new person inside. And that's why I've been showing those uh, different things that are uh, old or new or dirty or clean or used or brand new. The Lord Jesus wants things to become brand new for us. And I want to suggest three ways that things can be brand new. If you are a follower of the Lord Jesus, and I hope that you are, or that if you're not, that very soon you will be. Because the Bible says when you become a Christian, you become a brand new person inside. I mean, I still look the same. I'll not get any younger. I'll not get, I couldn't get any more beautiful. But there are changes that take place inside of me and take place inside of you. And it really begs the question of me, when you are looking at other people or other people are looking at you, three words that I want you to remember. When others look at you and others look at me, do they see a difference? Do you understand? Do they see a difference? It's not that there is something different about how you dress or how you comb your hair, or anything like that. But when they are spending time with you, do they see, oh, she is definitely a follower of Jesus. And the other word is here. When other girls and boys are spending time with you, and they listen to what you are saying, do they hear words that Jesus would be pleased about? Or do they hear nasty words that Jesus would not want them to come on our lips? What do they see and what do they hear? And the last thing is, what do they know? Does your life, does my life help other girls and boys to get to know Jesus too? These things are very important. It doesn't really matter apart from the fun element whether you're wearing brand new slippers or used slippers. But it does matter 
as far as the Lord Jesus is concerned, that there's something different about you, that other people can see a change, can other people hear a change, and that other people know a change too. Can you say the wee memory verse? I'll read it out to once, and uh, maybe the whole congregation would say it with me then afterwards. One, two. When someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a... Am I doing it myself here? Yes. Huh? Yes. Oh, I do apologize. <laughs> I repent. <laughs> a public repentance. Okay. I'm going to say it first, so keep quiet. <laughs> After two, one, <laughs> me. When someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. This is your big moment now. You better take it. After two, one, two. When someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, 17. Girls and boys, let's go for it. Uh, it's the third time now, all right? Just you and me. The big people keep quiet. One, two. When someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17. Let's go to rise. Lord Jesus, we want to make a difference. We want other girls and boys to be able to look at our lives, to listen to the words that come out of our mouths, and to know that we are followers of Jesus. Lord Jesus, will you help all the girls and boys and all the big people too this morning, help them to be followers of of Christ. Help them to be brand new people inside that others will see, that others will hear, and that others will know that you are our Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to sing a song that Stephen's going to, to guide us in, Jesus Loves Me. And if you could Remember the congregation to remain standing once the children are going out, and we'll sing There is a, a Redeemer as well, okay? Okay, so for those that haven't done this before, I'm going to sing this line by line, and you repeat, and then when we come to the chorus, everybody joins in. But on top of that, it's a bit cold in here. It's not as bad as last week, but uh, we'll get a beat going as well, if you can do it as well. So it's clap your thighs twice, and then clap. So it's, it's We Will Rock You if you, you're into Queen, so... But Dave will keep the beat going anyway if you can't keep that going as well. Okay, so. Yep. So. Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Wash away my sin. He will wash away my sin. Let his children. Oh, I put. loves me, he will stay. Jesus loves me, he will stay. Close beside me all the way. Close beside me all the way. 
Then his little child will take. Up to heaven for his dear sake. Yes. Jesus loves me. Yes. Jesus loves me. Yes. Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. you've managed to pick up an announcement sheet this morning with all the bits and pieces that are happening over the next week or two. Uh, there are also larger uh, print copies on the table at the back. You're welcome to take one of those. Let me highlight just a couple of things this morning. Can I say a big thank you again to everyone who helped this week in the preparations for Raymond Miskelly's Thanksgiving service on Wednesday. It was a big team effort and a real encouragement to the family and to each one of us to see the church family in action. So thank you to everybody involved. As we mentioned at Raymond's Thanksgiving service on Wednesday past, he and Margaret faithfully delivered the larger print announcement sheets every week to a number of people connected with the church family who found it difficult to get to morning worship because of ill health. As the Lord has called Raymond home, uh, we also want to make sure that this vital ministry for those who are housebound continues week by week. And in order to keep this going, we're, we're looking for help from volunteers who would be willing to pop by someone's house or a couple of homes uh, each week simply to check in a, a big hello and also to bring in an announcement sheet as well, just to keep that point of contact with the church family. So if you'd like to help with this going forward, would you have a chat this morning with Robert Beers? Give him a hug for his birthday today. He was up at the front. And Robert hopefully will be, back to, will be standing at the end towards the back of the sanctuary. So grab a cup of tea or coffee. Have a chat with him. Uh, you might be thinking, actually, where I live, there's someone who lives close by down the street that I think is connected with the church family but who is unable to come out to worship. The Lord might be prompting you to pop in to see them each week with an announcement sheet and to make that connection with them. So have a chat with Robert, give your name over if that's something that you'd like to do. 
If you're sitting this morning and you think, you know what, that's a ministry that I would love to coordinate going forward, um, then have a chat with Robert as well. And also, if you're aware that there's someone in the church family that you haven't seen for a while and who maybe has become housebound for whatever reason, and we're maybe not aware of that, again, give that name to Robert this morning so that we can add them to that list of people that we can deliver announcement sheets to each week and keep checking in with them. We never want anyone in the fellowship to feel forgotten about or unloved. And so this weekly announcement sheet delivery is actually a really vital ministry as we love and care for those who are housebound. With Alan continuing to um, be in hospital at the moment and for the recovery that he will begin to journey on now after his operation on Thursday. Uh, Alan and June's Home Fellowship Group is going to be meeting uh, from this Wednesday morning onwards for the short term at least in Ian and Annette McKee's home this Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. The details are in the announcement sheet and if you haven't received your material for the, that Home Fellowship Group, come and have a chat with me afterwards or Ian and Annette. Uh, we'd love to encourage you to, to step down into the basement and to take a look at the prayer space that has been used heavily this week by young folks in Clandy Boy Primary School. And again, a big thank you to everyone who was involved in that ministry. Uh, a reminder, this Friday night for ladies and girls of all ages, uh, you're meeting for some line dancing at half seven in the hall behind the church building. If you're planning to go, just sign your name on the sheet on the table so that we can make sure that we've enough uh, catering arrangements made. And uh, there's also information in the bulletin as to who to chat to if you want to find out more about that. And then just a quick reminder that we're beginning a series of three very informal membership sessions that start next uh, Sunday afternoon at three o'clock in our own home. Again, details are in the announcement sheet. It's an opportunity to explore what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus and a member of his church. Very relaxed. No one is going to pounce on you. This is not a test or an exercise where you'll be tested at the end, uh, but it's a real opportunity to ask loads of questions, and there's no obligation at the end to become a member. But if you want to come along and find out more, you'd be really welcome. If you have little ones and you're struggling to get someone to look after them for an hour, and we know that one family uh, is coming along with little ones, bring your little ones as well, because our boys would love to play with them too. So come along next uh, Sunday afternoon at three o'clock. And also, for those that are interested, there's a schools ministry conference happening next Saturday in Strand Millis College for anybody involved in school ministry. Details in the announcement sheet. And also on the 8th of February, something that's been run by the Presbyterian Church in conjunction with the Boys Brigade about how to engage more with boys in an intentional way in the life and witness of the church. So that's a free event. If you're interested in that, details are in the announcement sheet about how to sign up. We're going to gather our gifts and our tithes and our offerings for the work of God's kingdom now. And as we do this, rather than sing this morning, we're going to listen to the words of a song called Jesus Strong and Kind. The words are going to be on the bottom of the screen. They're quite tiny, so apologies for that this morning. But we'd love you to listen to the tune and fundamentally listen to the words. We're hoping that we're going to sing this with the children next Sunday morning when they're in with us. Ponder the words, particularly in these days where we need much help and strength from the one who is strong and kind and filled with love. And as we listen and even sing as you pick up the tune, uh, we'll gather our offerings for God's work. We 
we pray, Francis has kindly reminded me that uh, there will be no coffee, cake and chat tomorrow. We're moving the first and third Monday mornings from Monday week. And a big congratulations to John and Francis for becoming grandparents this past week with the birth of little Seth Tobias this week as well. We're going to pray for others and we wanted to continue to remember those in our fellowship at the moment who are finding life difficult for whatever reason. And we want to particularly remember this morning Jake Stanfield, one of our young people who is in hospital having undergone surgery to his head this past week to alleviate pressure in the brain. We also want to remember Alan Briggs, who had a lengthy operation on Thursday of this week where the consultant successfully were able to stop the bleed in his brain. And he begins now a, a prolonged period of recovery. His body is weak, but let me tell you this, his faith is stronger than I've seen it for a long, long time. We want to also think of Matthew Toms and his wife Julie and daughter Mia, one of our more recent families who have become connected with the church family. Matthew's dad has fallen seriously ill in the last couple of days uh, after suffering a stroke, and the family has been called to be with him at this time in a hospital in England. So we're going to remember them and also Sylvia Stewart, who is in hospital receiving care after a period of weakness in recent weeks. Those are the folks that we're aware of at the moment that are in hospital. If there's others that we're not aware of, please come and have a chat with us afterwards as well. As we mentioned earlier, please also have a chat. Uh, feel free and have a wander downstairs into the prayer space. Take a look around at all that the young folks have been doing, not just in the school, but also in the GB this week, as we've sought to encourage young folks to be still in the midst of a noisy, hurried world and to listen to God and begin to recognize that God loves them and cares for them and wants to speak to them and wants, uh, wants us to speak to him as well. So do take time to go around uh, down in the basement and we will pray for them uh, at this time. 
And then further afield, we want to also pray for this man, Wanda Muabibi. Now, that was the only photograph I could find of Wanda this morning. He's not normally looking that sober, I have to say. He normally smiles, and his bright white teeth are just would lighten up a room. But that's a very serious-looking Wanda there this morning. But he's written us a letter this morning. And given where we're at, maybe in our individual lives and in the life of the church with all that's happening at the moment in the fellowship, there's much truth and hope that Wandamu brings. He says, warm greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that this time would be another opportunity that you would see the hand of the Lord afresh. As you know, our journey to heaven has ups and downs. At times, we don't know why things happen to us while we are still trying to accomplish God's purpose. Yet we know that we are in his hands and he knows best how he wants to glorify his name upon us. I pray that this path you are passing through as individuals and as a church family would be the path you see God's glory all the more. My family is doing well, though there are minor challenges that knock our faith often. My younger son has a serious allergy in his eyes for which we could not get medical solution. We're praying that the God of miracles would liberate him from this challenge in his time. My ministry is flowing well. The challenge I have is time constraints to address the needs of colleges and Bible schools across Ethiopia. In the midst of these time pressures, I've been sparing some hours to write my master's paper. I'm on track so far. Lord willing, I'm hoping to spend two months in England in April and May to help with this. Please pray that my preparation for this plan would be successful. Every blessing, Wandamu. So let's pray for Wandamu and all the people and situations we've mentioned. Let's pray. Lord, we offer you our praise and our hearts, and we offer you our money and we offer you our lives. And we thank you for everything that you give to us, Lord. And we pray that you'll use each of us and the gifts that you've blessed us with in the service of King Jesus. Lord, we continue to pray for those we know and love who are unwell at this time and are in hospital. We remember Jake Stanfield and Sylvia Stewart and Alan Briggs. And we pray that you will sustain them and comfort them and give them the strength they need to recover from their sickness. Thank you, Lord, that even in the midst of their present health challenges, they have a deep awareness of your presence with them. And we ask that you'll surround and protect them and their families in these days, Lord. We pray for those struggling with sickness who can't get out and about the way that they once did and who are feeling low because of it. Lord, minister to each one, Father, by your Spirit and use us to bring your hope and comfort to those in need as you lay people in our hearts this week that you want us to reach out to in love. And we pray too for those grieving the passing of loved ones recently and a longer while ago. The pain runs deep, Lord. And at this time, we pray for Matthew and Julie Toms as they spend time with Matthew's dad in hospital in England, awaiting your call on his life to come home. Thank you that Matthew's dad loves you and will be with you soon in paradise. But for the whole family circle, Lord, give strength and comfort and peace at this very challenging time. Lord, we praise you for the privileged opportunity to teach children this week about Christian prayer and for the openness of the school next door to enable us to do this. We praise you too for the ministry of Rachel Tweedy, our SUE3 schools worker, and the heart that she has for you and for sharing the gospel with little ones. Lord, we pray that all the young people have experienced this week in the prayer room, that that will live with them for the rest of their lives, and that many will be drawn to give their lives to Jesus at this time or in the future. Help them amidst the noise and chaos of the world to be still and to know that you're God, that you love them, that you're calling them to trust and follow you. And may your kingdom come, Lord, to Clandy Boy Primary School as it is in heaven. And Lord, we pray for our dear brother in Ethiopia, Wandamu, and all his family. Thank you for how you're using them to build your church in Ethiopia. Lord, continue to protect him and his family. And we ask especially at this time for healing according to your sovereign will for his son as he battles with that severe eye allergy. As Wandamu speaks up for you and seeks to share the gospel with others, give him great courage and boldness. Provide for his every need and give him the energy and strength to sustain such a hectic schedule. Time is precious, Lord. 
Guide him in what your priorities are, Lord, for each day. Use him as he teaches and trains church leaders across the country. And give him all he needs, Lord, as he prepares to travel to the UK soon to continue his studies. Surround and uphold him, Lord, and his family. And as he encourages us, may we too be a constant encouragement in the Lord to him. Lord, as we've been listening to that new song a little while ago, its lyrics remind us that if we thirst, we're to come to you because only you can satisfy. If we're feeling weak, which many of us are today in lots of different ways, you encourage us, you encourage us to come to you for in you we will find strength. If we're fearful about what lies ahead today or this week, as we come to you, you will be our shield. And if we're lost, we don't have to try to find you because you have already come to us through your death and resurrection to bring hope and life, purpose and direction. Lord, you are good and faithful. You will keep us day and night. We can always run to you, Lord, for you are strong and kind. As we come now to study your word, help us to come with hearts and minds open to seeing you and hearing from you afresh. Will you bless our brother Ian as he shares from your word and our sister Chloe as she reads from your word. And may your spirit work in our midst through it all. And we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please turn with me to God's Word, to the Bibles in the pews or uh, the Bible app on your phones, if that's what you've brought with you this morning. We're going to read together Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 17, and Chloe is going to come and read to us now. <coughs> Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices, and you have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether it be in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Thanks, Chloe. I've given the title for our study this morning, uh, Back to Basics, uh, and hopefully it'll be self-evident as to why it's been given that name, because Paul is uh, reminding the Christians, the fledgling church in Colossae, of things that perhaps they could easily uh, ignore. Home truths. <clears throat> are seldom uh, welcome or easy to listen to. But someone who tells us only what they think we want to hear is neither helpful nor are they really being a friend. 
Mind you, in certain scenarios, telling the truth may be considered courageous. How do you like my new hairstyle? Does this dress make me look slimmer? Will anybody notice the pimple on my nose? Was the ball in or out? Now, while these are somewhat frivolous examples of home truths, the Apostle Paul, uh, in the passage that Chloe read, seeks to be both honest and helpful and hard-hitting because he is writing to people whom he has grown to love and love deeply. He has invested much in them, and he has longed to see them go on from strength uh, to strength and we might say, Paul tells it like it is. And God's word, of course, is like that because uh, we are often left no choice but to listen and perhaps to make significant changes in the way that we live. Paul is reminding these Colossian Christians of what is expected of them in terms of behavior. And they are to be dramatically different from those who are not Christians. And Paul uh, spells out how. When I was at Union Theological College Assemblies in my day, which was a lifetime ago, the professor then of practical theology challenged those of my colleagues together with myself who were going to be soon set loose on unsuspecting congregations as budding ministers. And he said this, remember who you're representing. Now, it's a long time ago, but I've never forgotten that. He never spelled out what he meant, so we, we sort of uh, put the dots in ourselves. But I, I'm sure that his mind was on uh, several things. Firstly, that we weren't to let the college down. We weren't to let the Presbyterian church down. We weren't to let the Lord down. But those were somewhat negatives that could become positives. But more positively, I'm sure that he meant that we were to behave at all times as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And you and I here today in St. Andrews, if we're Christians, we're never to forget who we are representing here on earth. In fact, the Apostle Paul in the passage um, uh, before the one that we read today was somewhat concerned and with justification that these young Christians were effectively sitting ducks. They were sitting ducks to those who would try to draw them back into the life that they once lived. They were sitting ducks to those who would hold them back from realizing their full potential as followers of Jesus. And they were sitting ducks to those who would keep them back from putting down deep roots in their newfound faith in Christ. And Paul expressed his concern in these words, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive uh, philosophy. Now, perhaps there was a time when consideration of the idea of being taken captive was somewhat foreign to most of us. But I would suggest that today being taken captive is a live issue. Regularly on our uh, news bulletins and in our newspapers, we're told about hackers and scammers who continually develop new ways to take over our phones, to take over our bank accounts, even to take over our identities. And in so doing, I would suggest effectively are taking us captive. Even using our details to gain access to our friends and trying then to take them captive also. And the danger of being taken captive regarding our walk with Christ is also a real one. And Paul reminds these Christians, and I believe would remind us today, of two things that I want to focus on. And the first is that we have a new status if we are Christians, because as Paul says, we have been raised with Christ. We have become something 
brand new. When someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. And for all of us as adults, same as with the girls and boys a little earlier, it is vitally important that our new status not only informs the way that we live, but it enables other people to listen and to see and to know that it is for real. <clears throat> immigrants, immigrants who receive residency, re residency rights in the United Kingdom will receive a new status as UK citizens. And once we leave the constraints of EU law, British citizens will have a new status, whatever that looks like, independent of the EU. All those who are granted the new passport will, though as before, retain their cultural and religious identity, their uniqueness as individuals, but their status from then on will be different because they'll be British citizens. And we're very aware, are we not, that citizenship brings both privilege and responsibility. There is an expectation, is there not, that we will be good citizens rather than lager louts terrorizing holiday destinations. We are expected not to bring shame to the crown, but rather to be good advertisements for our country. But of course, our citizenship if we are Christians, for all that we may today see ourselves as, as British or as Irish or as African or as Moldovian, we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven, Paul tells us in Philippians 3 and verse 20. So what does this mean? Well, well among many things, it surely means that we are to hold lightly to the things of this world whether we're talking in terms of matters financial or property or relationships or career, whatever it may be, so that nothing and no one has such a grip on us that something or someone other than the Lord merits undue affection and exerts unhealthy influences upon us. After all, Peter uh, puts it very grandly in 1 Peter 2 and 9, when he says, you are a chosen people, you are a royal priesthood, you are a holy nation, you are God's special possession. Now, how is that for special status? <coughs> Excuse me. Much is often made of the special relationship between the UK and the USA, and how special it seems to ebb and flow a bit like the tide, depending on all manner of variables. And yet, in total contrast, our special relationship, if we are Christ's, never changes. We have a new and an unchanging status in Jesus Christ. And we all need reminding that we have been raised to new life with Christ, and that what has taken place in our hearts and lives is forever life-changing. It's not for a moment in time. And the change that is taking place within us ought more and more to be visible to others. They ought to see it. They ought to hear it. They ought to know it, that we belong to Jesus. As I sought to point out with the girls and boys uh, earlier, in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17, we have these wonderful words about this new life into which we enter when we become Christians. When someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. So, do other people know whose you are and whom you serve? Apart from your name when you come up for the birthday bit, and hopefully we can all get it out without hesitation or equivocation. We, we know that bit. But who do you belong to, truly? 
Who are you serving? Truly. If someone was playing a game at your place of work or in your school or at your university or at your leisure place, whether it be the the leisure center or a golf club, if they were playing a game of spot the Christian, would people immediately point the finger at you? Would people immediately point the finger at me? Or would you be left out affiliation unclear? Now, our new status as Christians ought to express itself in many ways because the difference between believers and unbelievers ought to be stark. It ought not to be that we're just odd, though some of us are, undoubtedly. But we are different so that our speech should be different. What we say and how we say it Paul says in Colossians 4 and 6, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt. Different. Our attitudes to our children, to our parents, to our colleagues, to our fellow believers here in St. Andrews are in other places. Paul says in Philippians 2 and verse 5, your attitude is, should be the same as that of Christ. It's a high standard. Our actions ought to be different so that unbelievers see our honesty, are aware of our humility, experience our care. Jesus himself says in Matthew 5 and verse 37, let your yes be yes and your no be no. So we have not just a new status, but secondly, we have a new direction. Paul says in the second bit of that third verse, set your hearts on things above. If you've ever done any hill walking, you'll know that an ordnance survey map before it's of any use to finding the way has to be set. In other words, it has to be turned the right way around. And to set the map by the correct use of a compass, one ensures that the map is facing north. And it's only then that we can know for sure that we are going in the direction that we want to. Setting the map is a deliberate and a necessary action. Hill walkers walkers know the serious consequences that follow on from being careless in this regard. But once the map is set, there needs to be clear resolve both to follow the chosen path and to regularly check on one's bearings. And I would suggest it's much the same in the Christian life because it also requires deliberate action on our part in response to God's word. When Paul says, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, He means that we intentionally raise our sights from things. Things that while they may be okay in themselves, sometimes consume far too much of our time, our energy, our emotions, and our affections. And as a consequence, Christ can be sidelined. And taking Paul's words seriously means that we need to intentionally make Christ the center of our affections, of our attitudes, of our ambitions. To put it simply, we need to love the Lord Jesus more than anyone or anything else. Well, do we? We need discernment that can only come by God's Spirit to be able to distinguish between those things that while they're important, they're not all important between those things that have eternal importance and those matters that are uh, temporal and fleeting. Paul insists that Christ must come first. For example, for my love for my wife and family to be as it ought to be, I need to put Jesus first. 
For only then can my love be full and deep and stable <clears throat> and productive. For the work that I do to be of the highest standard possible, again, I need to put Christ first and be honest and, and reliable. For my relationships with others, maybe for your relationship with your girl or boyfriend to be right, pleasing Jesus must be the overriding consideration. Have you intentionally set your heart on things above? Have I intentionally? Who or what is important in your life? What motivates you? You'll have heard it said of others, music is his life. <clears throat> Sport is his life. He lives for his work. Well, as Paul saw it for the Christian, Jesus is the most important person in his or her life. And he writes to the Philippians, for to me, to live as Christ, it was as simple and as complicated as that. What about you and, and what about me? The fact that we are the Lord's must make a difference to relationships where we put the well-being of others before our own. It must make a difference to our employment where employees put a good day's work in and employers treat staff well. It must make a difference to our attitudes where the holding of grudges and the withholding of forgiveness or non-starters. It must make a difference to things which the world sees as important and we will no longer allow them to consume us. Let me draw it to a conclusion. We must not allow the ambitions of the world to dominate our lives, for they can so easily. We must not allow the attitudes of the world to warp our minds and to rule our hearts. We must not allow the anxieties of the world to fill us with despair and hopelessness. We must not allow the attractions of the world to suck us in and diminish our effectiveness as his servants. We must not allow the actions of the world to define us or to dilute our principles. Let's not forget that Paul's teaching has less to do with raising our game and more to do with setting our hearts. Setting our hearts on things above and it's my prayer as I finish for you and for me that God would enable us and, and maybe some for the very first time to start out seriously on a journey with the Lord and be determined to intentionally set our hearts on things above and be the person we can be with God's help. In the last word, may Jesus flood our thoughts and fill our lives and fire our imaginations. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, will you help us that we may reorder our priorities? Will you help us that we may see the things of this world in the light of eternity? Will you help us to distinguish between what is important and what is critical? Will you help us to let go of anything that is holding us back from single-minded commitment to Jesus? However hard will you help us to leave behind a relationship which we know is holding us back? from rendering the service in Christ's name that is his due? And will you sharpen our focus so that we can truly see the things that matter 
and help us to be strong when the evil one tries to hold us back or, or tear us away from our first love, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our closing praise is God of grace. the Lord is particularly speaking to anyone this morning, please don't uh, go away, perhaps with questions unanswered. Uh, talk to Mark, talk to myself, talk to any of the other uh, believers here that you know better and, uh, and have your, your, um, your questions answered to the best possible degree. Let's pray. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us this day and forevermore. Amen.